Hey all, welcome back. This is the for loops lesson and this is part one. So a for loop is the for statement creates a loop that consists of three optional expressions, initialization, condition, and final expression. Uh, these expressions are enclosed in parentheses separated by semicolons and we're gonna refer to it very often as a for loop. So here's that for loop syntax. Initialization goes here, then a semicolon, then some Boolean condition, and then some final expression. And so the way it's going to work is that this happens before the loop, this checks to see if the loop should continue running, and this happens after each loop. And then this would be the code that would run each iteration. Uh, so in a bit, we'll, I might show you how you can go between a while loop and a for loop, but I, I just don't think it's that important. It, it's a relatively simple concept. You just, the initialization for a while loop happens outside of the loop, the condition is the same, and then the final expression is the part that we used to have at the bottom of the while loop. But for some reason, every tutorial always has you do that, where it's like, okay, take this while loop and turn it into a for loop. In fact, I might have that too. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I wrote this a while ago. But I just, I don't think it's that, you know, vital of a concept. But anyway, let's look at how we would loop over a series or a sequence of numbers. So for variable x is equal to 1, <coughs> excuse me, a semicolon separates the Boolean condition. And then another semicolon separates to the, uh, I think they're calling it the final expression. It's the first time I'd ever heard that, but it was on MDN, so I decided to include it. And then this is going to log to the console uh, each value that x takes um, as we loop through. So it's like, starts with this, then it checks this, then it does this after each loop happens. So if we run it, we're going to see that we get 1 through, one through 10. And let's do the same thing, but in this case, rather than just i or x, we're going to have end of range. We're going to say start of range. Start of range needs to be less than or equal to end of range for the loop to continue. And that's not on a different line. That's just <clears throat> what happens when you have the, uh, you know, if you move this all the way over, it'll start moving everything onto. But do you see how, it, like, this all is considered line three? So that's what's going on there. And, well, missed it by a little bit. There we go. So this is the exact same thing, but just, you know, following the, the process that we did last time, where instead of having them just be i or not i, we're describing variables. Um, what ends up being kind of cool is that what happens here, here, uh, sorry, here, oh boy, oh boy, back up. So w what happens in each section of this for loop is actually kind of, uh, I don't want to say limitless, but it kind of is. It just, it has to do with how it's operating in sequence rather than it needs to be a variable created to increment or it needs to be a Boolean that only checks one thing or it needs to do something uh, once or just to one variable at the end of each for loop. You can actually kind of mix this up pretty significantly. Uh, we'll show a couple of examples of that, but since the limit, since the examples are somewhat limitless, we obviously can't show all of the examples. But you want to keep in mind that the flexibility inherent in a for loop is not to be uh, mm. underestimated. So now we've got a uh, coding challenge. So we're going to complete a function that takes two parameters. Both will be integers, start, end. Uh, logs to the console all the integers starting with start and ending with end. Your function should use a for loop to log each integer from start up to and including end, then return nothing. Lower examples of the code, blah, blah, blah. So here's my function stub. Here are my test cases. Create a loop which loops from start to end. So we'll say four. And here's where things immediately get a little bit, um, well, we could make it complicated, but we also, we don't have to. So here's, here's the, the initial one. We could say something like variable uh, x is equal to start x needs to be less than end, oh, less than or equal to end, and then x is going to increment by one each time. And then I'm going to wrap around my pseudocode the console.log for each value of x. Oh boy. So if I run this, let's just make sure, cool. If I run this, the outputs look as they should. Uh, a lot of times people will call this something like value to remind themselves that this is the value in question, and that's not really going to change things in any significant fashion. In fact, nothing that we're about to do is going to change anything in significant fashion. Uh, 2 through 5, and then 3 through 7, looking good. But here's something that we could do. Since start is already a variable, we could go ahead and ignore this first part. We could just leave it blank. 
and then we could say start is less than or equal to end, and then each time we could increment start, and then log start to the console. So uh, this is one of those quick demonstrations of, it might not seem obvious that you could do this, uh, but you can. So there you go. Uh, provided you have that semicolon there, it's going to work the way that you think it should. Um, so let's take it back to the one where we had uh, value. I thought value looked kind of nice. Okay, so with that in mind, our function, we'll run it again just to make sure it still works. It does. Let's copy the completed function, bring it back, paste it in. Excellent work. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.